Why is Canto Sub 8 subwoofer sealed instead of ported? Because we love sealed subs. I'm Jason from Canto Audio. See you in the next video. Maybe you should explain why. Yeah, actually, yeah, I should explain why we love sealed subs. But even before I do that, I should probably explain what a sealed subwoofer is. There are two main types of subwoofers you can buy, sealed and ported, sometimes known as vented. A sealed sub, well, it's kind of self-explanatory. It just means that the cabinet that the woofer sits in has no openings. It's just a woofer inside of a box, and all the air inside is trapped. It can't flow in or out. A ported subwoofer, on the other hand, has an opening in the cabinet that lets air move in and out. It's either a tube or a slot, and the shape and length of that slot affects how the sub sounds. Think of blowing air across the top of a bottle. If I change the level of the water, the tone will also change. A subwoofer's job is to hit really low tones, but a subwoofer can only go so low. As the frequency gets lower, going from audible to mostly tactile, volume also goes down. Design the length of the port so that the tone emitted from the port is lower than what the sub can produce by itself, and you've gained some extra low-end grunt. That sounds awesome. So why does Canto love sealed subs if ported subs have this cool magic trick up its sleeve? Well, there's a trade-off in each cell of subwoofer, and neither are perfect. After all, if there was a perfect design, everyone would just be doing that. So we've established that you can design or tune a port to give you better extension into lower frequencies, but what happens to notes below that tuning frequency? Well, the volume of the sub drops hard and it loses steam. A sealed subwoofer, on the other hand, doesn't have a sudden reduction in volume. There's a gradual reduction of volume relative to the frequency that's playing. In the industry, we call that a smooth roll-off. At really low frequencies, the kind in which you feel more than you hear, a sealed sub can actually have more energy than a comparable ported subwoofer. But I can't really use that term comparable because ported subwoofers almost always need to have a larger enclosure than a sealed sub if you want a ported sub to perform well. Let's take a look at that graph again. I've modeled the same woofer in a one cubic foot sealed box and a two cubic foot sealed box. You can see that if you put the woofer in a ported box that's the same size as the sealed subwoofer, one cubic feet, you kind of lose that extended bass advantage and it gets a little bit peaky in the upper bass region instead of being nice and flat. Sealed subs can be small without giving up performance. And that's important if you need a sub to go under a desk or if you have a limited room. Considering Canto sells a variety of desktop accessories and powered speakers that are intended to eliminate bulky gear, offering sealed subs just makes a lot of sense for us. The final reason we love sealed subs is their accuracy. The ultimate goal of a speaker, or even a subwoofer, is to faithfully reproduce the audio being sent to it without coloring the sound. Anything that's not the original signal can be considered distortion. So while we may automatically think of distortion sounding like this, it's not always that extreme. But ideally, you want as little distortion as possible so you can hear the original audio and nothing else. Sealed subs respond really quickly to changes in direction because every time the woofer moves out, the sealed cabinet wants to suck it back in and when it's pushed in, the springiness of the air wants to push it back to its starting place. They can go from equilibrium to high excursion and back really fast. And that's why you sometimes hear of sealed subs being referred to as quick or tight. If the sub overshoots where it's supposed to be and is slow to respond to changes in direction, then you'll get distortion. Sealed subs just don't have that much sloppiness. Audio is represented more faithfully, and you can distinguish between different notes without any smearing. Generally, sealed subs are more accurate than ported subs, which can act a little bit less controlled.
there's another way in which sealed subs can be more accurate. Ported enclosures can introduce distortion through something called port noise, also known as chuffing. I'll explain. At typical listening levels, the air that's moving in and out of the port is moving smoothly, like when you pour water out of a bottle. Wait, where's my bottle? You threw it, remember? Right, yeah. Ah, there we go. At typical listening levels, the air that's moving in and out of the port moves smoothly, like when you pour water out of a bottle at a really low angle. You get that sweet laminar flow. If you start to exceed the capabilities of the port, the air can't move in and out quickly enough, and you start to get this choppy, chaotic flow. You've effectively exceeded the flow rate of the port. And how does this sound? If you've ever been in a fast-moving car and rolled down the window or moonroof halfway, you might have experienced buffeting, that really intense, choppy airflow that you can hear and feel. It's not pleasant, and it's definitely not what the artist wanted you to hear. You can make the port wider to avoid chuffing, but if you increase port area, you also have to increase port length to keep the same tuning frequency. Physics. This can make the box even bigger, so you have to make a trade-off between size, volume output, and distortion. There are other factors that make ported subs more complicated to design than sealed subs, like how the sound emitted from the port and the woofer can interact and cancel each other out. It's just one extra thing a company needs to get right to make a really compelling ported subwoofer. If you're buying a budget ported subwoofer, there's a pretty good chance it doesn't do very well on at least one of these sources of distortion. It takes engineering time and usually more money to solve those problems, which can increase the price. You don't have to be so wary when you're buying a budget sealed sub as the design is inherently less prone to distortion, even with less expensive components. Simply put, less can go wrong with a sealed subwoofer. The main issue with a sealed sub is its inefficiency compared to a ported subwoofer. Ported subs just hit lower and louder with less wattage, but they need to be designed well in order to hang with a sealed sub when it comes to audio quality and size. If you're in the market for a subwoofer and you're on a budget and you don't have the type of large space that could benefit from the additional headroom of a ported subwoofer, you'll be rewarded with a tight, musical low-end sound that reproduces audio the way it's intended to be heard. I hope that you've learned now why Kanto loves sealed subwoofers. If you like this video, check out the rest on the channel and hit subscribe. I'm Jason with Kanto Audio, and I'll see you in the next video.